welcome to the University Network TV, where we scan the globe to give students, their families, and educators the very best tips for student success. I'm your host today, Dr. Crystal Rose, and on today's show, we're featuring the University Network's community members. You've read about them, you may have clicked on their websites, but today you'll actually get to hear from them directly. And if you've been with us any length of time, you'll know, just like our tips, we search out only the best types of organizations that will give you agency, will help you get into and stay into college and beyond. These are high bars and that's what you have today with a science pro or advanced science exploratory program. And we have for you today co-founder and professor, Dr. Cami Raleigh. Welcome, Dr. Raleigh. Hi there, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Crystal. Absolutely. Now tell us the name of your organization. What do you prefer? So we go by Advanced Science Exploratory Program, but our short handle for all our social media and website is A Science Pro. So both are good. <laughs> Excellent. Now, can you tell us who are the co-founders? Absolutely. So um, myself and my co-founder, Dr. Christine Walsh. Oh, wonderful. And what are the goals of your organization? So the organization came from uh, my, myself and Christine's interest uh, from mentoring a number of different high school and college level students who by the time they were in late college, sometimes even in graduate school, they were only starting to understand the scope of the scientific field, the scope of the research field, what it even meant to be a scientist. And from our own experience, whereas for myself, I had no idea until I was late in college that you could be a scientist that wasn't wearing a white coat and, and a chemist. Um, I didn't understand what that even looked like, let alone how to navigate the, the various fields and the various career options. And Christine had the same similar experience. And so our goal in creating this, it came from our passion to stop those conversations where students were finding out too late. By too late, I mean past the point where they can be getting some of the opportunities that they would have otherwise had in high school or college. And so we, our mission is to educate and inform uh, students at both the high school and college level about not only the career options, but what it means to be in different fields that are related to research and science. Ooh, so that's really exciting and it's really relevant for a lot of our students. Yeah. So, you know, how can students become involved? Yeah, so, so we really encourage student involvement in two ways. Um, and the first way is to use our resources. We're a nonprofit that was developed solely just to be trying to help students navigate this space. And we don't see a lot of other nonprofits or a lot of other resources that are, are doing this right now effectively. And so that's why we, we started in the first place. And so our, we just encourage as many students as we can to come and join the different things we're offering. We just had a career seminar series where we focused six different professionals in the field of medicine or in the field of academia or industry and just there to answer questions um, and it was completely free and open access so we we encourage that level of involvement of course because that's why we're here and the second level of involvement is um, we have mechanism for high school students and college students right now to be involved as volunteers and to be involved in different ways in our uh, CNC editorial, which is our base, our scientific journalist uh, setup right now. And so we have an editorial board we're looking for college students, and we have a journalist group that we're looking with high schoolers. And so we, and that that format may be changing and growing. But if you visit our website, you'll see a lot of different volunteer opportunities, both to be part of a science pro and to be part of our a journalist program. And the final way is, right now at least, is to become a regional ambassador. And so we, we're looking to improve accessibility and, and grow so that we can be making sure that there's no bottlenecks in the, the information that students are needing and us getting the information to them. And so part of that is leaning on students themselves, trying to use them to help us get the information to the school system and to other students in their area about our resources and about the information that we're providing mentorship wise um, so we can just make sure we're getting to as many students as possible so that's another opportunity that you can find through our website what will students get out of participating in your organization and what may they expect from different roles that's a really good question because it's that's not always as clear and so it's a it's a good opportunity to mention that and so in terms of the volunteer 
positions. We, because we're a nonprofit, we're still trying to, to get resources and funding. And so we lean on a lot of our volunteers to help run the program. We're volunteering and we lean on the people that are volunteering their time as well. And so in that way, we have student, we have, for instance, we have a student right now leading our whole social media effort. She's helping us really get out there through social means of social media. Um, and she's a, a volunteer, uh, I think she's our, called our content manager. And so she's she's not only getting experience on that end for, for her own CV and her own experience, but she's really helping our program. And we are also um, looking and, and looking through applications and welcoming applications for other managerial type things, like for instance, organizing different types of lists we can be targeting to try and make sure we're reaching as many students and parents of those students as possible. And so a lot of a lot of that just means on your own time, it's almost always virtual as we're a virtual run program. Um, on your own time, trying to offer your time to meet whatever objective it is of the role that you're filling. So, so I would say that's one aspect of it. So the hours are really around what you have. It's really just more helping us towards a goal. Um, the scientific journalist program is changing. And so what we're, what we're moving to in the fall is we are now welcoming, um, we're welcoming journal applications. And so we're welcoming research articles that we will publish as part of our journal and keeping it open to the, any high school or college student that wants to apply and offer a journal article. And therefore the burden is less because there won't be deadlines and criteria outside of the call for applications um, and you submitting an article that you're passionate about and excited about. And then the other way you'd be involved is a regional ambassador. And for that position, all that really means is taking time when you have it to network with the schools that fall within your region, um, particularly the high schools that fall within your region. So going to your own school, going to your science teachers in your school, going to related science clubs at your school, and trying to just spread the world word about the resources that we're offering to make sure that we can maybe come into your school and, and talk to you about the different types of fields and what science looks like, and just make sure that we're really disseminating the information as well as possible to as many students as possible. Well, that's fantastic. Um, thank you so much for summing that up. You're looking for students who have agency, students who have a lot of curiosity, and students who have a passion uh, to make a difference and uh, really offer more students the opportunity to work with your organization. Exactly right. <laughs> thank you. Until next time, thank you very much for joining us today on TUN TV.